Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today I'm revisiting Gishoth Sun's Avatar as requested by my supporters on Patreon. This is a deck that I've covered in the past, but that's back when Historic Brawl was a 60 card format. And of course we've gotten a lot of new dinosaurs in the meantime, so it was certainly time to revisit it. Gishoth an 8 mana, 7 6 legendary dinosaur avatar with vigilance, trample, and haste. And when it deals combat damage to a player, we get to reveal that many cards from the top of our library, putting any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield, and it doesn't matter how expensive those dinosaurs are, we get to put them straight into play. So the idea behind this deck is that we're going to spend our early turns ramping and developing our mana, so we can hopefully play Gishoth while the opponent doesn't have a very established board, and they don't have a lot of creatures to block Gishoth, and then we can hopefully cheat some expensive dinosaurs into play. And if you take a look at our deck breakdown, we've got a very small miscellaneous section with a bit of instant speed removal to try and interact with the opponent, then a very large section dedicated to ramping, including some cheap 1 mana accelerants, and going up to to 6 mana for Primeval Titan as kind of an honorary dinosaur in this deck. And then we've got a very large section dedicated to our dinosaurs, starting from 3 mana with the Hammer Skull, but we don't actually have very many cheap dinosaurs in this build, instead we're favoring the more expensive ones, since that way we get to maximize Gishot's ability. Some of the expensive dinos can also be cycled away, so they won't be stuck in our hand, we can still replace them with a land or some other card. And then uh, we of course are ramping into these expensive dinos as well, in case Gishoth doesn't work out. So taking a look at our miscellaneous section, we've got Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt as classic 1 mana interaction, and then Get Lost as a recent addition, destroying creatures, planeswalkers, and enchantments. Then we've got Huatli, not a dinosaur herself, but has great synergy in a dinosaur deck, especially one that can generate a lot of mana to make it easy to transform Huatli into the saga. And finally, the Great Henge can be a nice source of card advantage and can be pretty easy to deploy once we have a dinosaur on the battlefield. And even if we find more dinos with Gishoth, those will also draw with the Great Henge on the battlefield. And then going over the ramp section, we start out at 1 mana with Pilgrim. Delighted Halfling is pretty important, making Gishoth uncounterable. Then we've got Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, and even Utopia Sprawl as an aura to put on our forests, which is why we have so many basic forests and some other dual lands in the deck. And then at 2 mana there's a Drover, can make a man of any color. I'm not actually playing a lot of the creatures that only discount dinosaurs or only make mana for dinosaurs, since they're a bit narrow in scope. They don't allow us to accelerate out our more expensive ramp cards, whereas a card like Drover and a card like the Paleontologist can still help us play, let's say, a turn 3 Migration Path, Fastwood Surge, or uh, Invasion of Zendikar, which can then further give us that explosive start. So that's why I'm not playing some of those other ramp cards. Then we do have Explore, Glimpse at the Core as a new 2-mana sorcery, and Into the North the reason why we have all those snow-covered lanes. And then, as I mentioned, Paleontologist can also help us get the dinosaurs back from the graveyard in the grindier matchups. Thunderherd Migration revealing a dino, still a nice 2-mana rampant growth effect. And then Wolfful of Haven enchanting a land, making extra green. And then we've got some 2-mana ramp artifacts with Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Mindstone, and the new Iron Crag, which can also immediately tap for mana and can maybe later transform into an equipment to bolster Gishoth. Then at 3 mana there's Cultivate. Harrow can also get two lands that enter untapped, so we can immediately cast another 2-drop. We've got Somberwald's Sage making 3 mana to cast creature spells, so it can also set up an early Gishoth. Swordtooth, not the best ramp card, but still a dinosaur that lets us play additional lands. Topiary Stomper also finds a land when it enters. We've got the Domri making extra mana or potentially helping us fight while pumping the team, and can also make our creatures uncounterable. Then we've got the Worn Power Stone making 2 mana. Invasion of Zendikar at 4 finds 2 lands, same as Migration Path, which can be cycled, and Vastwood Surge, which can be kicked to give us additional plus 1 counters. And then the new Hulking Raptor, another way of accelerating our mana at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase. And then Mirari Swake is also quite fun, doubling our mana from our lands while pumping the team. Gilded Lotus can immediately tap for 3 mana. 
And then last but not least, Primeval Titan, finding two lands when it enters and when it attacks, so we'll often search up our Cavern of Souls to make dinosaurs uncounterable. And then a Castle Garenbrick can also give us an extra mana when it comes to casting expensive creatures. Don't have a whole lot of other utility lands, but that's also because we need a lot of basics, not only for Utopia Sprawl requiring lots of forests, but we also have some other search effects requiring some basic lands to find, and then we need the additional mana fixing. So that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for other utility lands, but we could technically run a few if we really wanted to, such as the one that draws cards if we have a large creature on the battlefield, but usually the way games play out is we're just gonna slam down Gishoth and then either the game is over or it does uh, get answered and then we end up casting other expensive creatures and we don't often have time to draw a bunch of cards. And then going over to the dinosaur section, we've already listed a few in the ramp section, but we also have the hammer skull, just a 3 mana 6-6, six, six, can be a nice blocker and eventually attacker as well. We've got the Dracosaur as a huge flying threat that can also provide more card advantage. We've got the Hatcher giving our dinosaurs haste and turning egg tokens into dinosaur tokens. We've got the Regisaur Alpha, another way of giving our dinos haste. Now of course Gishoth already has haste, but can still be pretty nice with our other slower dinosaurs. Then we've got the Crasher, which can generate large trampling tokens if we connect with our tramplers, of which we have many. And then the new Pantlaza can also be an excellent commander for a Naya colored dinosaur deck. Pantlaza is going to require more cheap dinosaurs, whereas with Gishoth you will want a bit more ramp to make sure you can get up to 8 mana. But of course Pantlaza can also discover additional ramp cards. And then getting up to 6 mana, we've got some of our cyclers, such as the Sandwing. Not an exciting creature to cast for 6 mana, but if we find it for free with Gishoth, we're not complaining. And then we can also cycle it to get a planes, including some of our dual lands, such as Temple Garden or even our Jetmir's Garden, which also has the planes type. And then the Monster Saur at 6 mana in red can also be cycled. And then at 7 mana there's the Bristleback, which has forest cycling and makes a 3-3 token when it enters. Then we've got some more traditional cyclers, such as Yudaro, but also totally fine to cast for 7 mana as an 8-8 with Trample and Haste. We've got the Titanoth Rex, which can be cycled, giving us a Trample counter, otherwise a 9 mana 11-11 Trampler. And then there's the new... Uh, trumpeting Carnosaur, which we can discard for two in a red to deal three damage. So that's kind of a form of cycling as well. Authorize a six mana, seven, six trample that lets us discover five, which is also quite effective. And then let's see here, we've got a Tally Primal Storm helping us cast spells off the top for free. We've got Carnage Tyrant as a seven, six trample hexproof that cannot be countered. We've got Kogla and Yudaro, which we can also discard for 4 mana, taking out an artifact and enchantment while drawing a card, otherwise a 7-7 that can fight or potentially come into play with Trample and Haste. Itali Primal Conqueror doesn't need an introduction, also very powerful if we can ramp into it ahead of schedule, potentially finding more expensive spells. We've got the Tyranax Rex, a 7 mana 8-8, eight, eight. cannot be countered, has Trample, Ward 4 and Haste, as well as Toxic 4, so can maybe try and poison the opponent to death as well. Galtan Mavern can also generate large dinosaur tokens or potentially an army of vampires. We've got Zetalpa has a 4-8 flying double strike vigilance trample and indestructible. We've got the Awakening Sun's Avatar. If we cast it from our hand, it can destroy all non-dinosaur creatures, so it doesn't trigger if we put it in play with Gishoth, but we can sometimes hard cast it as well. The new Galta Stampede Tyrant, another 12-12 trampler, and when it enters we can put all our creatures from our hand onto the battlefield if we'd like. And the Tarask, another nice curve topper, will have Ward 10 if we cast it, and then when it attacks it can fight a creature the opponent controls. And then uh, finally Zakama, Primal Calamity, awesome if we cast it, but still very good if we can put it in play for free, providing various activated abilities. And Galta, Primal Hunger, completes the trifecta of Galtas, this one getting a nice discount, and potentially being able to play it for just double green is quite powerful. And then the mana base we've already discussed for the most part, and uh, yeah, lots of basics are required. We've got some channel lands for added utility, so that's pretty much it. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and up against Yasharn. So I'm not going to get to sacrifice stuff, I don't think that's a huge problem. Our hand, however, leaves a bit to be desired, only the one ramp card. So I think we'll look for something a little different. Alright, this is much better. Still missing a dinosaur for a turn to Thunderherd Migration, but there we go. And then turn three, we could Vastwood Surge or play Sumberwald Sage. 
And our opponent with an Ornithopter, so they can play turn 3 Yasharn. Still gonna cast a Migration. Revealing Drancosaur. Can maybe play Iron Crag and tap it for mana in the same turn. But I will get my red mana sorted for Domri. And a Serpopard making their creatures uncounterable. That's okay. And an Esper Sentinel. Alright, so don't really want to play Domri into the Serpopard, which can pressure it. Could go Iron Crag into Sage, although they will get to draw off Sentinel. Or we can just Surge and then Sentinel also draws. Sage does make a little bit more mana for creatures, although more likely that they can interact with a creature. As opposed to Vastwood Surge. But then next turn I could potentially already cast Gishoth. So I think we go for it. And we have 8 mana for creatures in play. Now they could leave Yasharn and Serpopard back on defense to soak up an attack. But then we can try and do something else. And Rancosaur lines up pretty well on this board. And we could maybe even fight with Domri. And a Halfling as well. Okay. We'll see if they attack. So now Gishoth might have a window to get in. Yeah, let's go for it. Opponent takes the full hit. Do we find any dinos? We sure do. Pant Lanza triggers a bunch. But I don't want to discover one. I think we wait for the bigger discover trigger. And discover four is the biggest we're gonna get. Finding a glimpse. Yeah, they get to draw cards, that's fine. Still want to keep developing my mana. I'll have to read this one. So it grows with a number of lands, and then they can conjure duplicates of lands. Fair enough. So the board is getting pretty stalled now, so getting a Dracosaur to fly over might be key. Opponent does have an answer to Gishoth, unfortunately, but... At least we got our value. And a Gilded Goose. Now I want to try to avoid triggering Esper Sentinel if I can help it. Since uh, our opponent is down to two cards in hand. So we can play a Dracosaur. Play a Domri. And potentially fight as well. Or we can go for Dracosaur. Play Huatli, play Paleontologist. We'll see what we hit first. Stomper's nice. Yeah, I don't think I'm in a hurry to play Domri here. And then next turn we can threaten to transform Hotly. Our dinosaurs have haste, so Drancosaur can attack right away. And our opponent's jumping. Not sure if I should be worried about a sweeper from the opponents, but I'm just going to play the Paleontologist, which can also eventually get back dinos from the graveyard. All right, Nissa, that could be pretty lethal here. They've got, I guess, only two forests in play. So it could have been worse. Even though Chromatic Lantern makes their lands tap for one man of any color, they don't turn into forests necessarily. 
and our opponent goes all out. Oh, we've got a decent amount of toughness back here. And yeah, our opponent realizes that this is not lethal and explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the deepest foundation tokens. And uh, we're off to a nice start. Turn 1 Utopia Sprawl sets up turn 2, either Domery or Swordtooth. And we can name a red here. Yeah, I guess Swordtooth is fine. I've got an extra land I can play. Next turn, set up Gilded Lotus. I guess the upside of Domri is I could then next turn go Lotus and play Sawtooth with a 3 mana, whereas we wouldn't be able to play Domri with a 3 mana from Lotus. Although now we can just play a Somberwald Sage. Pantlasa was also an option, but this seems better. Alright, so we're already prepared to cast a Gishoth next turn on turn 4, not bad. Although we'll have to wait and see if our opponent keeps up interaction. In which case we might want to Pantlaza first to get more value. Cold Steel Heart, keeping up two mana. Hmm, so I don't really trust that Gishoth is going to connect. So let's give Pantlaza a try. Finding a Mind Stone. And then give Domri a try as well. Can attack with Swordtooth. And then now maybe set up a fight on one of the Knight tokens. Which will get pumped next turn. They could play the god, which we can also try and take out with a fight. But, uh, try and get our value here. Alright, Brave the Elements is what they had. That's acceptable. And we'll pass it back. Alright, so we'll try Gishoth next turn while triggering Discover. And it's fine if Domri dies. Oh, looks like you're all mouth and no hand. There's a lane, so they could play the god, which is a 6-6, six, six, so it can soak up a pretty big attack. But uh yeah, Galtime Mavern is also an option here. Get to discover 12. This is only 6. Still good enough to hit most of our cards. And then we'll still have some leftover mana. Can channel Crucible. And then still threaten to trade. So this seems good enough. Find an Invasion of Zendikar. Probably wanted to tap Somberwald Sage since it doesn't help in channeling Crucible. Opponent accepts the trade. They'll get to trample for one, maybe hitting a dinosaur. just a land. Okay, um, let's pass it back. They only have two creatures, so they won't be able to transform it back right away. Procession, another token doubler. And yeah, let's just try this again. Uh, 
Again, probably wanted to use Somberwald Sage. We'll get there one day. I'll bolt a token as opposed to invasion. Just wanna make it harder for them to transform back. Putin might have a token at instant speed. Probably still safe enough to send the team. Alright, Wandering Emperor luckily doesn't go after Gishoth. Can make a pair of samurai tokens now. And triple block, that's acceptable. And this time we did find a dinosaur. Awesome. Okay, pass it back. Battle Screech, that's powerful. Making four birds and then flashing back to make another four. Good thing a lot of our dinos have trample. But next turn they can easily get the god back and make a million tokens. So let's see here. Play Gishoth versus play Galta and Mavern. Which can make a pretty large trampling dino. Might be better at this point. And let's finally tap Somberwald Sage. Found a Primeval Titan, not bad. And getting a Cavern and Castle. And then probably time to play out Crucible. Still a bit short of casting Gishoth. Can cash in our Mindstone here. And then uh, time to attack. Opponent's at 5, so I think I'll go face. And then we'll get to make another large Trampler. So we'll see if they can survive. So they've got 9 toughness, we're trampling for 12, and then they still need to jump 2 other creatures. So that should have them just about dead here. And yeah, opponent falls to zero. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and it's the Dinosaur Mirror up against Pantlaza. It's going to be a tough matchup, since our opponent can put a lot of toughness into play and make it hard for Gishoth to connect. So we'll need a pretty good start with lots of early ramp. This hand falls a little bit short, even though Domery and Migration Path are great. We've got a few clunkers in hand and only two lands to begin with. So I'll take my mulligan, this is a bit better. Got turn 2 glimpse, turn 3 invasion, take it from there. And then hammer skull is good at playing defense if nothing else. Iron crag also an option, although still gonna start with glimpse, since at least with iron crag we can tap it the same turn we play it, so it virtually costs 1 mana in a way. Opponent has the turn to Drover. Invasion can fix our white mana. And they could be keeping up a counter spell like uh, the white one, but uh, more likely that it's a Harrow that's going to ramp them. If we wanted to play around a counter, we could double two drop instead. But. Um, I think I still prefer Invasion. Alright, no Reprieve. And I'll just get two planes. So we've got plenty more ramp in hand. 
opponent can play punt like that. Which hits an Avacyn Spilgrim. Could have been worse. Well, this is not going to be very effective in the matchup. I guess there's some non-dinos in play at the moment. So play Lotus. And then, let's say we play an Iron Crag. Then I can still play Hammer Skull. And then we should still have plenty to play Gishoth. Let's say they destroy Gilded Lotus. Six, seven. Then I would need to draw land. So there is a reason to still play Signet if they destroy Lotus. But Hammer Skull gives us a way to stabilize the ground a bit. And if they use removal on Hammer Skull, they may not have it for Gishoth. Four mana for Galta, that's a good one. Discover 12 and find another Galta in Mavern. Doesn't get much better. Now our opponent's got 24 toughness to block Gishoth, so that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I guess uh, we've got the final Galta in hand. Although I don't think it's gonna necessarily line up all that well. So yeah, things are very awkward for us. Probably fine to just cast Awakening Sun's Avatar, but then I'm just dead to these Galtas attacking. Or I can play Galta and not put this in play since otherwise it doesn't trigger. Yeah, this uh, is not gonna work out very well. But uh, I guess we don't have much of a choice. Yeah, Galta into Galta, into another Galta. I guess I want to transform Iron Crank since it gives us a way of uh, maybe boosting up our 12-12. Although it's going to cost 3 mana to equip. Can only put Raptor in play really. And then keep the Avatar or we can put both in play just to have more toughness. And try and make some trades. Maybe that's the way to go after all. As opposed to trying to deny them 2 mana next turn when we're probably already dead. And then just play the Signets and pass. Okay, well, just got a brace for impact. Hammer Skull and Avatar are a decent double block on a 12 12. So we've got that going for us. And then we can trade Galta and Galta. And if they don't have anything else, maybe Gishoth can sneak in and attack. Well, if you clicked on this video to see some dinosaurs in action, you've got your money's worth here. Trapjaw Tyrants. They need to enable Enrage to exile one of my creatures. Banishing Lights for free. Can clear Galta. So now I can still double block a 12-12. Chump another and still take a lot of Trample. It's gonna be difficult. Opponent did leave some Dinos back just in case. All that's possible they would have had lethal or at least for some ugly blocks if they went all out because yeah, I still have to chump here so if they had attacked all out I think we're dead but now we're at three can play Gishoth and uh, suit it up nope we're one mana short of suiting it up with Everflame And our opponent has enough toughness to uh, block successfully here. So, not much we can do. They might even have some instant speed removal left. Alright, so they were super far ahead and easily could have won last turn. GG's. I guess we can see what's on top of the deck. A land. Yeah, Galta into Galta was... Definitely a nice one. I'll be tapped out. And our opponent can cross the finish line however they please. A Drover of the Mighty and a Dinosaur Token as their weapon of choice. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Azur, Eternal Schemer, an enchantment deck. 
and our hand's not bad, Haven plus Cultivate for early ramp, and uh, can cycle Idaru. So our opponent's gonna try to turn some of their enchantments into creatures at some point. Between Haven and Iron Crag, no strong preference. Next turn we can play Iron Crag into Cultivate. So we're off to a very nice start. Opponent with a companion to draw. Harrow is also an option. Although I think going Iron Crag into Cultivate is about the same. And then next turn I can maybe Harrow and then also cycle Idaru. And there's the Eternal Schemer giving Hexproof Death Touch and Lifelink. And uh, yeah, it's time to keep developing our mana. We can maybe start by casting Harrow and then cycle Idara, or we can cycle first in case we draw something useful. I suppose we have enough mana to just cast the Wandering Monster as well. But I really want to make sure to play Gishoth and eventually the Tarask. So I'm happy enough cycling this. And find a halfling. So should be able to cast all of these. Get Forest Mountain. And then next turn we can make an uncounterable Gishoth now thanks to the halfling. Now they can keep a Death Touch creature back to block, but we'll still trample over and hopefully reveal some dinos. Or we can go for a Tarask. If we've got 9 mana total here. And this is also legendary, hence uncountable. Good trade for companion, but I'll just take it. Opponent hanging on to 4 mana, so they might have removal instead of a counter spell. So, yeah, Ward 10 seems like a good way to get around that. And we could even play Signet first. Uncounterable thanks to Halfling, Protection thanks to Ward. And we'll get to take out Xur. Do we want to transform Iron Crag? Almost, I think we wait until we deploy Gishoth and see how that works out. We might need the mana for now, especially if our opponent's got a Sweeper. Opponent with an Omen, which they can turn into a creature, I suppose. But the fight's still gonna happen, so this is gonna lose Death Touch. Scissor down. And our opponent's at 17. Okay, so we've got some pressure now. And our opponent still needs to respect Gishoth. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Bartolome, Black White Sacrifice. Our hand has a few too many expensive cards, so that's a mulligan. This we can keep. Turn one Utopia Sprawl on red. Turn two Cold Steel Hearts can also potentially Lightning Bolt. Now we could play Huatli, but it doesn't actually ramp us. So I'm still partial to Cold Steel Heart, even though I won't be able to keep up Lightning Bolt. That's fine. And this can name White.
and bitter blossom on two. A nice source of uh, creatures they can sacrifice. So now we can Vastwood Surge, keep ramping, even though Hatcher is somewhat tempting too here. And then maybe should have named Red with Cold Steel Heart to keep a Blinding Bolt here. But I'll get some more red mana going. So with a land we can already play Gishoth next turn. We'll have to wait one turn. That's alright. Play Huatli. Can play a land and transform it. Which I don't hate. Small chance your opponent can remove it for one mana. But if it's a source to plowshares we get it out of the way. So Gishalf gets to connect. And Grave Pact, okay. That's a bit of a problem. So we're gonna wanna take out Bartolome before we play Gishoth. Otherwise they can just make us sacrifice creatures at will, pretty much. This only sacrifices artifacts and creatures, so it can grow up to 3 toughness. And they're just gonna let it go. Alright, so I can play Gishoth and uh, Smash. So if I just attack with Gishoth, Pwn could double block just to trigger Grave Pact twice. So I think we just attack with both, since our opponent can make us sack two creatures by just double chumping Gishoth. Hopefully we just uh, trample over and find some more dinosaurs. Their Grave Pact will resolve before Gishoth resolves, so we will lose Gishoth here, sadly. But that's okay. And yeah, we hit pretty big. But yeah, Grave Pact plus Bitter Blossom is still pretty scary. Doesn't matter how large our creatures are when they can make us sacrifice them. Yahani, another way to make us sacrifice creatures, and the Militia Captain can also provide a steady supply of tokens. Now we get to find any dinosaur in our deck. And can we cast Zakama? We should be able to. Let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Our dinosaurs also tap for mana. So I'll get a Zakama, which can then destroy their enchantments. So let's go for it. And then can play Galta first. But I guess we can also start by destroying Grave Pact. And our opponent has seen enough without Grave Pact. So they're going to be super far behind. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Admiral Brass. So this is going to be a pretty tough matchup unless we're off to a quick start. And this hand only has the one Mind Stone. Now we can potentially use a 4-man ability on Kogla, destroy an artifact, and then Pantlaza on 5, which can find more ramp. So it's not the worst hand. Yeah, I'll try it. If our opponent makes a treasure and we try and destroy it, they could sacrifice it in response, and then we don't get to draw a card. So that could be a little awkward. So we'll see what happens. Opponent with a Siren, so we can try and destroy the map token at the very least. It's gonna be a staunch crewmate finding an artifact or pirate. Finds Forerunner. At least that one doesn't ramp. 
The main concern is the opponent getting Admiral Brass in play on turn 4 before we can get a foothold in the game. And yeah, there's the Aerialist, so opponent does indeed get to ramp. So my best hope is to just destroy the treasure here, hope they don't sack it in response, I still get to draw, and then play Pantlas on the following turn. Well, now we could also go for Migration Path, is that better? Then next turn I would have 7 mana and a for an Itali. Yeah, that's probably still better. There's also a tiny chance her opponent doesn't mill a pirate. But we will likely take a significant hit. So there's Admiral Brace. Our deck just doesn't have much instant speed removal, so... The hopes of uh, taking it out before it triggers was not very high. Opponent did find a Freebooter, which doesn't have anything to take at least. And there's a Daredevil in the graveyard. So they can hit us again next turn. Well, we're at 11. We've got a land to play, and that would get us up to 7 mana, which is not enough for Gishoth, but enough for Natali. Which could be the play. Could also play Cogline Hidaro and then fight Admiral Brass. Then, if they sack the map token, they would still fly for at least 7, 8, down to 3. And uh, they can easily drain us to death with Forerunner. So that's unlikely to be good enough. Now Itali also doesn't fly. And our opponent's going to put another 4-4 into play, so we kind of need to hit a removal spell of the opponent's deck, pretty much. Which um, is not super likely. But I just don't see us winning if I play Kogla and Hidaro. So... Yeah, let's just go for Itali then. And we found Primeval Titan and Wash Away. Well, Titan was a good hit, Wash Away not so much. So we should be dead next turn, most likely. Can get Cavern of Souls and Castle. And I don't think we'll get to play our Gishoth, unfortunately. If we were on the play, we might have had a chance this game, but turn 4 Admiral Brains is just a little bit too quick. So far under triggers whenever another pirate enters, so if they play its main phase, it'll trigger from Daredevil coming into play. And then as we've said, if they sack the map token, Aerialist flies, so that's another 3 damage. And they found Captain Lannery, which they can also put in the graveyard. So they've got more fuel for Admiral Brace. So we're taking at least 9 in the air. Plus 2 more on the ground, which is lethal. Alright, GG's. We are tapped out, so it's not a secret here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is almost good if we had untapped green for Halfling. Sadly, we've got a Sun Petal Grove. So, it's gonna be turn 2 Halfling, turn 3, maybe Raptor or Migration Path. I guess it's still decent up against Taisa. They could also have early removal for the Halfling, but I'll give it a shot. Sandwing we can also cycle. Ah, there's a command tower now. Perilous Mirror is next. So they can take out the Halfling. This used to be a very popular card in... Uh, the Duels of the Planeswalkers days. Now we can play Domri. 
versus just uh, planes cycling. I think Domri's fine. They're unlikely to have planeswalker removal. Prowler is next. 1-1 one, one Death Touch. And alright, I guess our opponent did have Planeswalker removal after all. So now we may not get to curve or 4 drop. Alright, never mind. I think I've learned my lesson and I'll go for Migration Path over Hulking Raptor. And then next turn, maybe Raptor Cycle Sandwing. As our opponent plays Taisa. Okay, Power Stone's also an option now. So let's say we play Power Stone, Cycle, or we can play Raptor and Cycle. A Raptor we can also put in play with Galta, so I think I do run out the Power Stone. And I want to hit my Land Drop for the turn. Can get our Jetmir's Garden. Play it and set up for Gishoth. Hopefully your opponent doesn't keep up instant speed removal. Alright, they're tapped out. So Ghost is clear for Gishoth to attack. Galta is tempting too, I'll be honest, but gotta take this opportunity to get an attack in. What do we find? Bristleback and Stomper, not bad. Okay, is it time for Galta? Maybe overextending into a sweeper a little bit, so I guess we may as well attack first and see what happens. Blocking with Ashnod will trade for Gishoth, but they'll still take 6 Trample. And we find a Monster Sore, which we can also activate to maybe draw. So I don't really feel the need to commit anything else to the board. Can just pass, and then maybe next turn replay Gishoth. But if they cast a Sweeper here, I don't want to lose more creatures. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Up against Pantlaza once again. And uh, this time on the play with turn 2 Migration Path. Turn 3, either Surge or Invasion. So, we're off to a decent start. Itali's going to be nice if we get to it. Turn to Drover, same as last time. Can maybe kick the Vastwood Surge later. Well, we can already play Itali next turn, which the opponent doesn't know about. They're ramping with Signet. Natalia has a good chance of hitting another ramp spell, so we can set up a Gishoth next turn, even if we don't draw a land. And our opponent's gonna tap out for migration. Okay, so opponent's also developing their mana nicely. Now let's hope to hit some expensive dinosaurs. Well, can't complain, found Zakama. And we even get to untap our lands. Awesome. And then now we get a discount on Gishoth, thanks to the Huntmaster, so we can still run it out. Get to live the dream here. Two mana Galta at the ready. And we found Dracosaur Swordtooth. Not expecting a sweeper from the opponent's deck, but it would be pretty disappointing here. 
Just a bunt laser. Well, our opponent won the last RNG lottery, but I think we won this one. Can even give our Galta haste, thanks to the Huntmaster. Could also be solid inclusion in our deck, to be fair, but it doesn't help set up turn 3 invasion or Vastwood Surge and the likes. So, I didn't include it here. But uh, yeah, Galta. Plus, could play a Crasher as well, or a Flying Sandwing. Either way. Activate on Galta and smash. Opponent had a lightning bolt. They're gonna transform our invasion for us. That's very nice. And attack. Awesome. Sadly, won't get to see another Gishoth trigger. But uh, yeah, we got to live the dream here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, and uh, our hand's definitely keepable. Turn to Iron Crag, at the very least, turn 3 cultivates with an extra green mana, can try Raptor instead. And then we have a few answers to the opponent's commander. Still gonna favor Iron Crag over taking out the Halfling, although next turn we could maybe take it out to prevent an Omnath. Although I have to imagine our opponent's got more mana acceleration. Paradise Druid. Found our own Halfling. So I can cultivate, get a green source, play Halfling. And at 2 toughness, they can't quite take it out with Omnath with only one elemental. Opponent runs out Omnath anyway. And they had an Unholy Heat to finish off our Halfling. Fair enough. Well, we could now answer some of the opponent's mana creatures with Carnosaur, Get Lost. Could take out Omnath. We could also just develop our Hulking Raptor and uh, Avacyn Spilgrim. A lot of decisions. How much do we care about slowing the opponent down? We mainly want to make sure our opponent doesn't have a lot of toughness to block Gishoth, which kind of means taking out Omnath. So going Hulking Raptor plus Get Lost might be the sequence. And then for now I don't have to get lost right away. So I guess we can wait and see what happens. Nissa. Okay. That can also potentially trigger twice if they have a fetch land here, for instance. And yeah, Fabled Passage. So, taking out Nissa probably doesn't do much since they can just fetch a response. So, we'll let that happen. If they sacrifice Fabled Passage, I could take out Nissa. Prevent them from searching up an elemental into the north as well. Yes, our opponent's gonna get to grow Omnath a bunch. And then I think the plan is just to take out Omnath and hopefully get an attack in with Gishoth. But Nissan's going off here. They found an elf instead of an elemental. And Omnath is attacking. Well, now it's also tempting to take out Nissa instead. To clear the most toughness. Hope they don't have a wash away in hand. And then, yeah, we can try and hit big with Gishoth. And then Omnath can eventually start drawing when they have 8 or more lands in play, but they're still pretty far from that. 
So, may I actually think we get lost, Nissa? Take that from Omnath and then untap and hopefully resolve Gishoth. The wash away would be very painful here. Can also play Avazas Pilgrim now. That resolves. Still gonna keep Iron Crag as an artifact that makes mana attack. Opponent takes it all, and we find some sweet dinosaurs. We do. Not bad. Okay, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our dinosaur ramp deck in action, and Gishoth certainly delivered, finding lots of expensive dinosaurs with the ability. Now there are still going to be difficult matchups out there, especially if the opponent has lots of instant speed removal for Gishoth, or perhaps counter spells, which can also make it tough to replay our 8 mana dinosaur with the commander attacks, but at least by focusing on having a lot of ramp, we make it possible for us to replay Gishoth through the commander attacks, as opposed to a deck that has more cheap dinosaurs, which can have some good synergy throughout the deck, but then we're going to make it much harder for us to replay Gishoth once it gets removed, so this approach seems a bit better. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.